Hi, this is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering, and this is the third in a series of videos about bioprocessing. We're working on to make, create a, a bioreactor um, fermentation tank here. So we'll continue from our current project, which has the geometry created, a steady state flow only simulation. Okay, and then we're now going to, going to proceed to a multi-phase analysis. All right, setting up our simulation, continuing from our reactor here. Um, we're going to go to our default domain and add a new phase. So we'll call this the bubbly phase. It will be air at 25 degrees Celsius, uh, dispersed fluid, and a mean diameter of, let's go with 5 millimeters. There are options for polydispersed fluid, which allows us to give different, um, different uh, diameter sizes. But for now, we'll, we'll go with a fixed diameter, and you can certainly change this uh, as time goes by. Uh, we are going to turn on the buoyancy model. The direction of gravity is in the minus z direction and the buoyancy reference density will be the density of water, uh, 997 kilograms per meter cubed. So looking at the rest of this here, we're going to use an inhomogeneous model. There's a fluent dependent uh, turbulence models. Fluid specifics. Uh, we'll, we'll use the scalable KF style model for the fluid and then using density difference and turbulence here. Uh, particle fluid in interaction. We are going to turn on a surface co tension coefficient. The surface tension is 0 0.069. Uh, we can turn on the interface mass transfer uh, models later on, uh, but for now we're going to switch the drag model to grace, uh, put a volume fraction correction ex exponent to 2 because these bubbles are fairly large, and we're going to turn on some turbulent dispersion forces. So this will cause flow to be dispersed. Okay, actually we should be using Faber average drag force of one. Uh, and we can turn on mass transfer, write an equation for the mass transfer, but in this model, we'll skip that for now. And then our for rotor side, it should be the same. So you can see that once we start changing the model in one domain, all the other domain kind of follows suit and um, has the same type of information. So this is all we need for now. On the top now, instead of a wall, will be an outlet. And this will be a degassing condition. So it'll keep the liquid in, but allow the gas to bubble out. And we want to specify a, um, an inlet at the hole where the gas will bubble up. So uh, usually in these reactors, we look at VVM, volume of, of air that goes through the, the reactor. So I'm going to put in maybe 25%. Uh, we need to convert that into a velocity. So we'll do uh, velocity inlet. All right, so we have the VVM here. Let's uh, put in a gas inlet. And for now, we'll just put in a placeholder for the speed. Oh, we need to specify that is air coming in here and not water. So 
go back, going back to expressions, we need to convert this VVM into a velocity. So we'll set this as velocity in. The equation then is VVM uh, times the volume of the assembly divided by the area of our gas inlet times 60 seconds. OK, so this is volume. This is divided by area. We have meters, so it's meters per second. OK, so we're going to go into our gas in and replace our number with this expression. Hmm, we got to fix this. So I think we're going to have to do this separately. plus the volume at, oh, turbine. OK, so that works. There's a couple notes here. Uh, drag force is only fa valid for bubbly flows. Uh, density of the par particulate, particulate phase is bubble should be significantly smaller than the density of the continuous phase. So grace is for bubbly flows, which, which is what we want. And there's something about interface, uh, same warning as before. But that's pretty much all we have to do to set up this model. Uh, we have uh, periodic boundary conditions, bubbles coming out here. We have the top here as a degassing boundary. And this allows us then to set up uh, our simulation. OK, so let's go ahead and run the simulation. Yeah, to run the simulation, we want to connect the solution from the previous analysis to this one. This will allow us to make use of the initial conditions generated by this, this model, and that should make the simulation much faster. So initial values uh, provided by project schematic. Sure. OK, the simulation has been completed. Took 45 minutes. And it looks like it uh, conversions criteria was, was reached. So let's take a look at the results. So this is the model. Um, look at a bubble volume fraction. So we see that there is a buildup of bubbles behind each of the blades. You can create an ISO surface to look at bubble volume fraction as well. Let's do 5%. Oh, this is 50%. OK, let's look at 1%. Zero one percent. Okay. 
This is the shape of the air that's inside of our domain. Uh, we can look at something similar if we plot our periodic surfaces. So we probably need to plot logarithmic to see a distribution of, uh, let's hide this part here, of gas to uh, the volume fraction of gas bubbles to solids. Uh, let's include the, this surface as well. There we go. So now we can take a look at the volumetric gas distribution, uh, which is sim very similar to our ISO surface plots over here. Using the same techniques before, we can create expressions that'll calculate uh, uniformity of, uh, but instead of shear, we're going to, all of our, uh, values here are no longer valid because we need to specify which material. So we're going to look for, look at the, maybe the bubble uh, volume fraction uniformity. Okay. Shear average, we can switch this to uh, bubble volume fraction and bubble volume fraction. Okay, so that's the uniformity for the bubbles. So we know that on average, um, on average we have about the volume fraction of air to liquid is 0.3%. And uh, our uniformity is about 40%. So there's, and as we change our sparging rate, the rotational rate of, of, our, of our mixer, uh, maybe even the viscosity of liquid, we should see different types of information. Uh, with this data, we can also do things like look at mass transfer rates. A mass transfer rate is a function, typically a function of the bubble size, the velocity of the bubble, um, and a few other parameters. So we can, using expressions put in that method and look at what the bubble rates are. So the mass transfer rates. Uh, taking that a step further, we can go back to our CFD simulation here and specify the mass transfer rate as a function of those values, how, how fast the bubbles are moving, etc. And that'll allow the air to diffuse into the water and we can look at the concentration of the bubbles. Uh, we can make the bubbles different sizes. So there's a lot more we can do. Uh, if you have more questions or if you're interested in this type of simulation, let us know. You can find us at www.singularityeng.com. And um, if you like this type of video, please subscribe. Thanks and have a great day.